I want to ask work on different aspect, which is attachments. What kind of attachments we have? First attachment is prosperity. What you possess, you possess furniture, car, whatever you possess, you become attached to it. Right? So more you possess, you become more attached. And your suffering is in proportion to what you possess. So simplest solution is simplify life. Possess fewer things. You have less burdens. Okay. That is this. attachment to money. Money is a means. People become attached to it. They say, I will be happy when I have this much money. Then the greed increases 10 times as much. Then money, then it leads into prestige. It leads into social life. It keeps on growing. We forget money was a means and people work their entire life and time to retire, they cannot let go of it because they are so much attached. They are so much program. They have become workaholic. So even if they want to retire, they cannot retire. So, so many people are so much addicted. They think if they don't work, they will die. And many of them do die because they have created no creative interest. What is creative interest? You do for the sake of doing it, not for gaining anything. Krishna says, perform your duty. Perform your duty with smiling heart. Expect no reward. Even if you don't expect any reward, reward will come. So you don't throw away the reward, you accept it as a blessing of God or prasad. If you do this, you will be very creative. So people who perform their duty, their job, whatever it is, they do it with love. They work over time, they don't even notice it. They enjoy it. They always get rewarded. People who look for reward, they want to get more money working less. They are looking for weekend to enjoy life. So they drag their week by hating what they do. They don't enjoy their week and they don't enjoy weekend either. Because on weekend, they're always thinking, I have to go back to work. So the whole idea is be in the present you won't be attached. Don't be attached to money. Then there is other kind of attachment, attachment to the body, do yoga position. So for health, body is a means, but people become attached to the body, how they look, what people say about them. People are not only interested in what they possess, but what other people comment about their possession. If they buy a new car and try to show off and people don't respond to it, they get upset. So this is what happens. Contentment is the greatest thing. If you want to be free from attachment, be content here and now. More you want, more you will be attached, more you will be frustrated. One of the attachment that is most difficult to conquer is emotional attachment. I have, in this book, I have written so many different kinds of attachment, cause of attachment, all the detail. But in short, 
emotional attachment is the last thing to do. When you talk about non-attachment, people immediately consider, I don't want to be attached to my family. This is the wrong thing to do. You love your family, be attached. That is all right. But don't get preoccupied by it. Treat your family as if you are treating someone. Treat entire world as your family so you don't get attached to your own family. When we become attached, we are controlled because we are emotionally attached. And the children or whoever we are attached to, they sabotage us emotionally and we fall for it. Even if we know it, we fall for it. So this is where you have to be firm that you perform your duty, but don't get sucked by emotional sabotage. Emotional attachment is all right. So you work with it, like you grow up with family, do things for family members. You learn to sacrifice, practice unconditional relationship that you do something for them, they do something for you. Don't be self-centered. I did and you did. So here every, in the family, every child has own room, own this, own that. They don't talk to each other. They don't help each other. In joint family system, when there is hardship, people live together. They share with each other. They learn unconditional love. This is when you learn non-attachment. So prosperity comes in the way of attachment. Many parents, I have seen all kinds of cases. The parents love their children, especially mothers love their children. And they provide so much for their children. Their children get spoiled. They go in the wrong direction. Still, they cannot do anything because attachment has grown deep. So love and attachment. So create the distance. You perform your duty and think, I don't own my family. Where, where, where was my family before they were born? Where will they be when they're gone? Where was I before I was born? Where will I be? Then we learn the lesson in non-attachment that this world is like a school. This world is like a motel. We check in for a short time, so we endure it. Don't get so much attached to it because we are returning to our home after vacation. Our real home is consciousness. This body is temporary to learn the lesson from life. Okay. Still going further, that non-attachment could be cultivated by cultivating devotion or bhakti. Even all the great masters of Vedanta, they talk about devotion to God. Adi Shankaracharya, that he is considered authority on Advaita Vedanta. He wrote the poetry. I translated it and his six verses in the Secret of Bliss book, 31 verses. He says, Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam Mudamate. says, worship the Lord, worship the Lord. Though he was expert in Gnana Yoga. So even if you get into Gnana Yoga, even if you get it, Bhakti adds on the faculty because all other disciplines cannot be sustained without Bhakti. 
So from childhood, I was attracted to bhakti, mantra chant, devotion, and this balances out. People feel stress. I recommend get into devotion. And not only devotion, but go in, create the image of God and repent in front of God. Let your tears flow. This is what purifies. This is true repentance. With devotion, your heart melts. All the vices disappear. Your anger and fear disappears. You don't have to practice any discipline. You don't need to do anything. Just purify the heart. Cry openly in front of God and you purify yourself. This is considered strange concept, but in the East, Sufi dancers in the Middle East, they dance putting on the dress of a woman dance in circle, worshipping, they are lover of God. All the souls are lover of God. So we have to worship God. And for worshipping God, we get so much involved. There are nine fold path I talked in the last session. It is all in the yellow book. All the steps, Shravana, Kirtanam, Mananam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanivedan. Nine steps. You cultivate bhakti toward God. This is why ritualistic worship, they go to temple, have an image of God, and they treat the image of God like a live person. They wake up God, they feed God, put him to sleep, and they cultivate devotion. Singing the glory mantra chant is worshiping God. Thinking about God, reading the scripture is also a step. But this ninefold bhakti, ninefold devotion is the starting point. The ultimate thing is parabhakti that all the rituals purifies you, so you est establish connection with the God, that you become servant to God. You serve God and you serve humanity as if all the living creatures are creation of God. It is saying, na jane kis veshame mil jaye bhagavanare. They say it, God will come to test you as a poor person, suffering from disease and you worship and give charity and ignore that person. You don't know that was God testing your generosity. So increase the devotion to God, that is Sakya and surrender. All these things you cultivate that will purify you. Ultimate is parabhakti, that you don't need any ritual. Ultimate is you consider all the creation of God as God. You serve everyone unconditionally. This is the highest path. This is the path of renunciation. So renunciation is the climax of non-attachment. Non-attachment, you cultivate, you give up possessions, you give up name, fame, and power. Still, it is non-attachment. But true renunciation is you lose interest in that. Things fall away. Just like leaves in the fall, dry leaves fall away. Doesn't need any effort. Same way, worldly attachments fall away. That is true renunciation. True renunciation is climax of attachment. When you lose the attachment to the world, you build attachment to supreme consciousness. 
So really to build love for God, to get rid of attachment and all the miseries, you can practice Bhakti Yoga. This is the path I am taking after going into Gnani Yoga and climax. What gives joy is Bhakti Yoga, chanting the mantras, singing the bhajans. So this is Bhakti Yoga. All the great masters recommended it. If you get, want to get rid of any kind of stress, get rid of the mind. If you think about practic practicing mindfulness and awareness, you don't need to do anything. Only just by devotion and worship, your heart will be purified. Everything will happen. There are so many scriptures and yoga teachers and all kinds of movements training you to train the mind and study the books and study this and study that. Go to church, go to temple, go to do this, do that. Simplest thing is awaken love within the heart. And that can be done. You don't need college education. All you need is devotion. Devotion will balance. Heart and head needs to be balanced. Energy of the head, EEG, is much weaker than EKG. Heart has much more power than the head. If you want to accomplish, cultivate love. Subconscious mind works on love, visualization. Our conscious mind works on thinking and logic. No matter how much thinking and logic you use, you won't succeed. But when you have love for something without effort, you will succeed. You know, just so many things I accomplished because love for it. So this is what I recommend. Don't waste time in gathering information and knowledge. Just chant with love and purify yourself. Purify so much that tears flow from your eyes. It is considered weakness in the Western society or male, how could you cry? In the East, this is considered normal because deep within you have love and emotion that you are suppressing. This is the problem with males. Females have easy access to emotions and express. And men are kept aloof. Even in the sophisticated society, when you are not allowed to express yourself, there are lots of tension. In India, for example, so many things are taken normally. You don't hold back. You say whatever you like, actually it is too much uncivilized. People talk to strangers like, and they get relief from all the problems because their heart is opened up. There are so many techniques are used. You eat with your, with your finger, it looks less civilized, but civilized society will learn one day to eat with the fingers because it is more satisfying. All other artificial means are against our heart and feeling. So this is what I recommend. Okay, good. So I want to, okay. Devotion with a mantra. With a mantra, you create devotion. Even with raga, there is greater devotion. So I want to give you mantra. With this raga, it is in the slow pace. So you can sing. We'll have enough time that you can practice singing. It is Radhe and Govinda. Only two words. Radhe, Radhe, Govinda. Govinda Rade. 
Why? Radha and Govinda. Govinda represents God or consciousness. Radha represents goddess or prakriti. So always there is union of God and goddess. So Krishna has Radha, Ram has Sita. They respected female aspect as prakriti, nature. Through nature, we can reach consciousness. So, Radhe Radhe Govinda Govinda Radhe. Krishna is consciousness and Radha is consort. And in Bhagavad Gita, you see Lord Krishna. In uh, scriptures, Bhagavatam, you see mention of God, Goddess, and incarnation of God. But here, will practice the mantra Radhe Radhe Govinda Govinda Radhe I'll sing so you get the words Radhe Radhe Govinda and it's done at a slow space so you have chance to get the feeling, generate the feeling so your heart opens up, mind shrinks, the love becomes unconditional. You feel love. Ram Krishna Paramahansa say people shed the tears for loss of money, loss of family, loss of prestige. Very few people shed tears, feeling separation from God. This is what we should feel if you want to cultivate bhakti. Shed the tears, feeling separation from God. God sent us in the world to learn the spiritual lesson, experience the world, and learn the lesson so you choose the proper direction. Same thing uh, is said by Patanjali in Yoga Sutra that all the gifts are given to human to experience the world. And after experiencing the world, realize the world is impermanent and go inward toward her higher self. When we were born, we were upside down. That is one of the saying of Lord Kabira. When we were born, we stayed upside down for nine months. When baby comes out, cries. Baby cries and world laughs that baby is born. Kabira says, perform your activities so that world cries and you laugh, you smile. That means live the life for devotion so you find peace and harmony. This is the ultimate essence. If you worship God as Christ or Buddha or any aspect, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, all the prayers goes to Supreme Consciousness which is beyond boundaries. Krishna existed 5,000 years ago, Christ 2,000 years ago, uh, Muhammad 1,400 years ago, just, just 1,480, but doesn't matter. Your heart connects to God. That is the purpose of Mantra Yoga. Oh, 
Introverted and feel the love oozing from deep inside, unconditional love that breaks all the barriers of the mind. It expands your consciousness. You feel instantaneous peace and joy. You don't need to worry about suppressing the mind and removing all the vices. Just awaken the love within and you will feel the joy. Love is relentless love for God. Love expands consciousness. Love knows no boundary, boundaries. One loves everyone and hates none. One sings and dances singing the glory of God. This is what bhakti is. That you are impressed by creation of God. You cannot comprehend him. You want to see God. And all the prayers is to express yourself. That is true bhakti. Is not ritualistic, not belonging to any religion, is awakening the heart to experience. So I will repeat this with beats, with harmonium, without it, so you will get the tune. Radhe and Govinda, only two words. Radhe Radhe Govinda Govind Radhe 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 Govind Govind Radhe 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 Govind Govind Radhe 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 Govind Govind Radhe Govind Radhe 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 Govind Govind Radhe 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 Govind Oh, 
Listen to the beats and let the mantra flow. After you practice for a while, mantra will flow and you are worshipping God or consciousness and the creation of God. Creation God of God means all the living creatures. They are not separate from God. are more than prayers. Prayers are the words that made by humans. Mantras are coming from great source, universals through, through some spiritual masters. So they have some special powers. But chanting itself, it will create more joy and love in the heart. By chanting the name of God, so many people who were robbers become enlightened. So many people were evil, their life got changed. So this is to be experimented. And in India, in just the, the culture that is so common, you can see that happening, that people who are criminal or when wrong path, they change. Here, Hare Krishna movement, they had so many young people following the path that they became free from addiction. And still there are many centers. We visited a Virginia center and around the world, many temples, they follow the basic path is chanting and they chant only one mantra Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Okay 